the Tais established the Nan Chao Kingdom in southwest Yunnan province of China in the middle of the 7th century AD. In the course of history, they spread in different directions. China, Vietnam, Myanmar, Laos, Thailand and India went on to be their homeland. In India, they settled only in the states of present Assam and Arunachal Pradesh. The Thais, who entered Assam under Sukhafa, identified themselves as Khantai. Sukhafa and his men, on their onward march, first settled on a small fertile valley located in the southern range of the Patkai Hills. This valley was known as Khamjan and hence the identity Kham Thai. As the Kham Thais or the Thais under Sukhafa migrated further west, the beauty and bounty of the land left them spellbound. They proclaimed the land, now present Assam, Myuk Dun Sung Kham, meaning heavenly. Sukhafa entered Assam in 1228 AD through the Patkai Hill Range. He was accompanied by his three queens, two sons, several nobles and their families, officials and soldiers totaling more than 9,000. He and his men traversed a distance of more than 600 miles before reaching Soraydale, the first capital of the Ahoms. In due course, they married women that were the natives of the land. Some of these tribes were Moran, Borahi, Kachari and Chutia. The ties under Sukhafa could mix with these group of people and embrace them into their fold. They acquired their culture and tradition and mingled with them to create an atmosphere of unity and brotherhood. The locals called Sukhafa and his men Ahoms. Sukhafa was the first Ahom king. The Ahom kings are revered and addressed as Sorgadeo meaning a heavenly king. The Ahoms believe that Sorgado Sukhafa is the descendant of Langdong, their supreme god. Sorgado Sukhafa ruled Assam from 1228 to 1268 AD. In later years, just after the Ahoms under the leadership of Sukhafa entered Assam, another Thai group, namely Thai Khamyang, Thai Khamti, Thai Aitonia, Thai Turung, Thai Nora, and Thai Phake, migrated to Assam from South China, Burma, and parts of Southeast Asia. They are all Buddhists under Hinayana sect. All the Buddhist groups write and communicate in Thai language. The word Thai, as in all the Buddhist groups, is reflective of their original race and the Ahoms, who are also Thais, use the prefix Thai. Today, majority of the Ahoms do not converse in Thai language and are not well versed with the ancient Thai Ahom religion. The Ahoms have their own religion called Bam Phi. This is an amalgamation of Taoism, Buddhism and Animism. Oh, 
Among those persons that accompanied Sukafa to Assam also included Deodhai, Mohan and Bailung. These three classes of people were responsible for performing the religious rites and rituals, marriage ceremonies, formulating social code of conduct and most importantly for writing the chronicles of Ahum legacy. The Ahum kings, starting from Sorgadeu Sukafa, entrusted them with the task of writing the history of the Ahums. These were written in the Thai language. The glorious 600-year rule of the Ahoms were thus carefully chronicled by the Mohans, Deodhais and Bailungs, the priestly and scholarly class of the Ahoms. During the medieval period of the successful Ahom reign, some Ahom Sorgadeus converted to Hinduism. They brought Brahmin priests from other parts of India. Many temples were built dedicated to Shiva and his consort Parvati. Tantric and Shakti worship began to take its hold on Ahom dynasty. A few of the Sorgadeus also encouraged Vaishnavism. Barakha Thai Sot Dikhini Ami Ahilu Ahi Pothom Mabasat Mane Aka Thai Bhala Gita Basur Mane Prae Thai Bhakha Sor Sa Hui Asil Hibonga Dino Te Ete Kisum Mane Bhai Bhuha Puri Le Bhuha Puri Te Onlo Ke Te Am Onyo Dhamar Dikhi Roh Bolo Ga Hei Hei Tu Ki Gol Amar Prae Kota Bilag Loop Pae Gol Jee Kholay Zani Sile Ba Ohi Bo Zani Sile Hei Ki Bo Zani Sile Onlo Ke Matro Ata Ata Gile Je Punjab Ata Lo Khato Ata Ata Gile किन्तु भाखड़ जो उन्नत कोई बोला गये कर बाग हिका बोला गये कि पता कोई बोले इस कोटे लोग के मने एकु मने हाई नो कोई ले नकोरा है तो ये त्याकी होल अमार प्राय पोपुलेशन तो कमी गुस तार पसे पसे आई आई ये तो होल के अमार किसो जिकनी कोण मुआ में ताये बोरम बोरम डे कोई ऐसी लो ये त्याजित्याई प्रभ अमा प्राय कमी है हिले ये तो ताय हा हाइट्यो भाग मो कोई सिलो बो के बाबा कोई सिलो अमी कहने के पोपुलेशन बो हम पोपुलेशन कहने के बो हाप पुरा हबो मो बस इसे एक्सपर्ट किस मन लोए हो क्या जो मन एक्सपर्ट आनु ताय फाके ताय खामती ताय तुरुं अमी छोटा जोनों गुस्ती पुरा जी होने ताय फाका कोपर हरांड कोशिश करने से जो दिन हिकाल होते हैं टीचर ले पोपुलेशन लो बाहिगो लेते हैं मैं टीटे सेवेनी टू पढ़ाए मने इस टाइम भागा स्कूल खुली बहुत मने लेसन दिलू ये नेगे दिसीलू जे काल साल लिखतू अत केरमन बसु बोना इसलिए ही किताब सोलिया से आखों मोर और नहीं लालूं का मित्यो तारे बस तारे � the Mohans, Deodhais and Bailungs preserved and practiced the ancient faith and culture. In the process, they could keep with them most of the ancient scripts and manuscripts written on various forms. These manuscripts offer valuable information regarding the history, culture, tradition, religion and geography of the then Assam or Muik Dun Sun Khan. Patsako, Parijat, Hatiburua, Akhoya, Majgao and Deodhai villages 
are the home of majority of these Ahom priests and scholars. Patsaku is located about 30 kilometers from Sivsagar, the historical township of Assam. The village remains the proud bearer of an age-old Ahom culture and faith. The houses were built on raised platforms with walls made from bamboo sticks and mud paste applied above the surface of these bamboo walls. Such houses could protect the people from flood and earthquake and also from wild animals that roamed freely in the dense jungle surrounding the human habitation. The roofs were strengthened by wood and had openings on either side, enabling free flow of air and maintaining of the temperature inside during extreme heat and severe cold. <laughs> Different paddy varieties are cultivated. Only a single harvest is done. Agriculture season starts in May and ends in November. Rice is the staple diet of the Ahoms. It is cooked using firewood. The hearth is placed at one end of the kitchen. Steamed rice is packed in leaves. This method is prevalent among the Thai Fakes who make rice balls for offering the bhikshu, a Buddhist monk, and also to the monastery. This Thai Fake girl who got married to an Ahom boy is showing the Ahom ladies how to make rice balls and pack them in leaves. Rice is used to prepare a variety of delicacies. Crushed rice is called sira in Assamese and is one of the most common food items which they prepare during festive occasions like Bihu. Dheki, a manually operated foot machine, is used to produce sira. It is the women who engage themselves in such activities. During Bihu, the Ahoms and also most Assamese communities in general have a special delicacy prepared from the eggs of a breed of ant called the Amroli Purwa in Assamese. It is an integral part of their food habit. This variety of ants build nests and lay eggs during the month of April and May. It is the Mohon or the Bailung who normally pluck the nest as it is considered auspicious.
After the ants and the eggs are collected on a bamboo utensil, it is placed on a water container. This separates the ants from the eggs, though it is not entirely possible to separate the two. Egg is added to create a special flavor. Rice beer is prepared simultaneously. On any occasion or festivals, rice beer is a must. It is called Luk Lao in Thai. The particular rice is soaked in water for a week and it is then squeezed into balls allowing the fermented liquor to collect on the dish below. Also, a variety of medicinal herbs are added to the rice beer during fermentation making it a suitable health drink. The priests eat the delicacy along with the rice beer. এটা সুবিধা যেটা সুবিধাটো বনোয়া হয় বনৌষধ উপর বনৌষধ বিশেষ কই আমার কিছু মানে বেমার মানে প্রযোজ্য হয় যে হওয়া হাল লোখার পর আদি করে নিমোনিয়া ভৌখ হোম মেসকুহুত এই মানে ব্যবহার করা হয় বরগঠনা হয় ঢাকন ঢাকন পয়তা তারপর কপৌ ঢেকিয়া কপৌ ঢেকিয়ার পাশত মানে আপনার কসাই দরব বিলবিদ আছে এই কসাই দরব লাগে আর তেকে মানিমুনি দিবা দিয়া হয় সৌ মানিমুনি ব মানিমুনি আদি করে বিভিন্ন ধরনের ঔষধ দিয়া হয় তার তার মানে ঔষধটু শুকায় রোদ শুকাব লাগবে শুকাই পায় ঢেঁকিত খুঁজে ঘুরি করবো ঘুরি করার পাশতেই কি হয় এটা চাউল তো খুঁজিব চাউলট আগে প্রথম বানিত তিয়াই রাখিব তিয়ার পাছত কোমল যেটা হব তার পাছত এই চাউলটা খুঁজিব খুঁজি তার যিখিনি আসলে এই যে মানে ঔষধটা বনওয়া হল তা ঘুরি ঘুরি করা হয়েছে এই তাত মানে মিহলাই দিব তার গুটি জালুক থাকিব জালুক দি এই মানে হুল পিঠাটা প্রস্তুত করা হয় তাই ভাগাত পেন হুই গান বলে কোয়া হয় No past would be history if not recorded and maintained in a scientific and systematic manner. The Ahom kings patronized the writing of their history. These materials on which the history was chronicled was obtained from nature. The manuscripts were mostly written on Sanchi part obtained from the bark of the aloe wood tree having its scientific name Aquilaria malacanensis in assamese the tree is called sanchi moi pray horu obostate detae uthi hongrekhon kori rakhisil phohara sokolo apuray ase takete eta pohi asil oi dangote mo monot mane hu hu huni bole bhal palu phor tu huni bhal lagile iman dhuniya ke gai ভাবব নয় এটা ইমান ধুয়া পাঁ ভূ তো প্রায় মানে প্রায় চতুর্থ শ্রেণীর পরে ভিকা তাই ভাষাটো পুথি পথ পুথিয়ারপ মূল ধূপ একদম মানে একটা গুরুত্ব একটা হারি আছে তে যে ধুয়া মাতে দেন চি তাই চাও মানে নাম থন থেন বর্তমান যা একুই চারিদিন তাদের গরম পানি পলো হয়েছিল এই কথাব শুনি মেলি বহ ভাল লাগে ভাল লগা হেঁটুই তাই ভাষাটা শিখব ললো হাঁচিপাত কত কেন আছে অকন মানুষ যুগুটাই থাল তারপর মানে যেটা মানে সেভেন্টি টু পড়ে মেট্রিক পরীক্ষা দিল দিয়ার পাশতে হাঁচিপাত মানে পুথি চাই মেলি সব কমপ্লিট করল ভাষা হারি পালো যে আপনার অভিধান পালো অভিধান পালো অভিধান মানে শব্দ পালো পড়িবলে ভাল লাগে এটা ভূটো লগালে বড় ভালো লাগে কা চাম্বা কা ওরি কা যাব কা বেহাব কা কপালি কা কষ্ট কা এই ঠিক তেনে ধরনের পড়ি পড়ি চালো যে এই বড় ভাল বস্তু গতি এরব নো ঠিক তেনে ধরনের হাঁচি পাতুত আর চাইছো এই আমার মানে বহু বিভিন্ন জায়গাত মানে পণ্ডিতক পুথি পা হাঁচি পতিয়া পুথি পড়ি আছে পুথিব নো কি পুথি কেন কেলো এনেকে পেলাই থাকে তাই যে বুরঞ্জি পাইছো এইটো পাইছো সেইটো পাইছো চাই চাই গিয়ে ঠিক তেনে ধরনের মানে এই হাঁচি পতিয়ার যে মানে শিক্ষা আহরণ করে 
প্রায় এটা স্কুল খুলিল কেবা বছর তাই ভাষা বিদ্যালয় খুলিল মানে ভারতবর্ষ বিভিন্ন প্রান্তরপা যে মানে এটা স্কলার সকল আহিব হল থাইল্যান্ডেও পাইছো এজন সুদ্যান ইসুত ইসুৎ ঠিলা গাইছিল সুদ্যানের মই যে কথা পাতিছিল এটা কিতাব ঠিকই আছে কিন্তু কথা হল কিন্তু তাই জাতি ছটা জনগোষ্ঠীর ভিতর তাই ফাঁকে তাই তুরুং তাই খামিয়াং তেল আখর কেটামান কম আমার ইটো অল্প বেশি আছে ছটা আখর ডিফারেন্স সেইটো অল্প দিগদার হয় আমি যে নাম আমি যদি দাম বলে কোথাও নাম বলে কয় দ আখর নাই আমার দা আখর আছে ঠিক তে ধরনের ভাব বিনিময় তেন হয় আর among all the different forms of writing material on which ahom history and in general assam history was chronicled sanchi part was most widely used the sanchi part or bark of tree was larger in size convenient and was easily available history astrology thai ahom religion herbal medicine and other rites and rituals are inscribed in these sanchi parts These sachi paths are considered sacred and holy and regular obeisances paid. These manuscripts are kept inside small wooden boxes. Prior to taking out the manuscripts from the wooden boxes and opening them, the mohan or the deodhai lights an earthen oil lamp and incense sticks and offers prayer to the presiding deity in the past sanchi paths were kept on the dhwasan the bamboo platform hanging a few meters above the hearth this way the sanchi paths or manuscripts are kept beyond the reach of the common man or any person who might be in touch with it without having a bath at the same time this practice worked as a wonderful preservation method the smoke generated from the hearth kept insects and other harmful objects away some works of divination called bansang in thai language were inscribed on the outer crust of oblong bamboo pieces of small size tapering towards one end in assamese it is called kathi bansang the manuscripts also reveal the art and science of astrology bansang is unique in its evaluation and calculation the priestly class deodhai Mohan and the Bailung are the ones who have deep knowledge and the understanding of the intricacies of Bansang. They evolve their findings by studying the legs of a fowl. There are many symbolic interpretations in the Bansang. Thickly woven muga cloth was also used as writing material and the manuscript is called Felung Febang in Thai language. Felung Feban means a manuscript of strange calculations. The conjugal life of a couple could be forecast by studying the manuscript. The Felung Feban can determine the perfect bride and groom depending on their names, origin and other requisite information. This scripture is as old as 800 years. The Ahom Sorgadeus were renowned for their administration and diplomacy and quite incidentally most of their successes are attributed to the power of the Bansang.
Thai Ahoms have different rites and rituals performed on different occasions and having specific purposes. Notable among them are Rikkhon, Omfa, Madam Mephi, Huralung, Saifa, Damfi and Lankuri. These items are required in the rituals, each having its own ritualistic significance. It includes banana leaves, banana stems, bamboo, cane, betel nut and leaves, banana, sugar cane and a few other items derived from nature. The devotees are preparing three mehengas. They are pedestals required for placing the offerings to the deities. In this ritual, prayers are offered to Jasing Fa, the goddess of learning of the Thai Ahoms. It is conducted at the Deohal, a sacred place of the Thai Ahoms. The one seen here is the Amlokhi Deohal. Rituals at the Deohal are being conducted for close to 800 years. Buffalo, pigeon, goat, fowl, pig and sometimes even dogs are sacrificed at the Deohal. The Ahus follow both the Shakti Marg and the Bhakti Marg of devotion. In the Shakti Marg, animals are sacrificed and in the Bhakti Marg, only fruits, gram and a type of bean are offered to the gods. In this ritual, along with the goddess Jasing Fa, Jan Sai Hung, the principal deity, and Fa Nuru Leng Dong, the lord of the heavens, are also worshipped. Various types of illness and diseases affect mankind and so the goddess is appeased to shower them with wisdom and knowledge and to get rid of these bad tidings. Besides, the main purpose of making offerings to Jasing Fa is to conduct the Banseng ritual which means to analyze and evolve the fortunes of a person or the state by studying the Bansang manuscript. Eight fowls are offered to the gods and goddesses together with boiled eggs, banana, sugarcane, sticky rice mixed with jaggery and akhoi, which is parched paddy or Indian corn free from the husk. All these are offered in a pedestal called the mehenga as a mark of reverence. The priests then pummel the fowls with a stick and kill them. The skin and feathers covering the legs of the dead fowl are removed. The priests thoroughly clean and scratch the legs in search of small pores. The pores are extremely small. After the pores are detected, thorns of a lemon tree are inserted inside the pores. The direction of the thorns will tell the tidings of the person for whom Jasing Fa Deity was appeased. The future of the person is prophesied using the help of the Bansang manuscript. This Bansang manuscript is called Kushi Bansang. Kushi implies to prick or to make a thrust. The Bansang can this way prophesize the future of more than thousand different outcomes based on such findings. This unique method of prophesizing served the Ahum dynasty so much so that for close to 600 years, the Ahums remained the unconquered rulers of present Assam and some parts of Nagaland and Meghalaya.
this round hillock like surface is called a moidam. A moidam is a place where ahums are buried. The ahums do not cremate their dead. A mound is built above the burying place to signify the presence of a moidam. The dead sorgodio used to be buried with items of gold, costumes, betel nut and leaves, eatables, brass plates and things which he might require while in heaven. It is in Sorideo, the first capital of the Ahom Sorgodeos, that such moidams could be seen and it was the burial place of all Ahom Sorgodeos and queens. Sorgadeo Suikafa, the first Ahum king, was buried in Sorideo in 1268 AD. The common man has a small moidam at the backyard of his house. The Ahums believe that a person is not reborn after death. The person becomes a Damfi, that is a god, and goes to the assigned place in one of the several heavens and lives with relatives. The ancestor worship in the household of an Ahum family is called Dam rituals. In the household Dam rituals, the spirits of the dead parents dead grandparents and dead great-grandparents are worshipped. The Dham worship also includes worshipping of the gods like Lankuri, heavenly priest Jan Sai Hung, god of the heavens Leng Dong and the goddess of knowledge Jia Sing Fa. The Ahums believe that the soul of a human being has twofold existence. One is called Pu and the other is Fu. The father gives Pu form of the soul to the child while in the womb of his mother. Fu form of the soul takes shape when the child is born. Once a person dies, the Pu form of the soul resides in the house and gets recognition as Dham, worthy of worship by the family members. After three generations, the soul gets emancipated as Fi or God. The Fu form of the soul gets absorbed in the dead body, which is ritualistically kept in a palanquin or a casket and buried in a moidam. It is believed that Fu form of the soul gets absorbed in nature after some years and so the family members leave the dead in a moidam with the fond wish that it will leave the earth harmlessly. Rice is cooked along with meat varieties like pork and duck for the feast to follow once the rituals are over. 
pork is the most popular meat of our homes and during any rituals it is customary for the host or the community to prepare huge quantity of it fish is also an item in the feast luklao meaning rice beer is brewed in sufficient quantity it is an important ingredient and no feast is complete without the rice beer all thai homes taking part in the feast should consume rice beer Sorgadu Sukafa worshipped his forefathers by observing the Medam Mephi. Me means worship, Dam means dead, and Fi means god. On several occasions, he conducted the worship to seek blessings from the Almighty and his ancestors to successfully rule his land. Thereafter. Several Sorgadeus of the Ahom dynasty continued with the tradition of conducting the Medam Mephi rituals to seek victory during battles, find peace during strife, gain respect from his countrymen and enemies, and acquire power and wisdom that keeps alive the great Ahom legacy. Eight gods and goddesses are worshipped during Medam Mephi. For the good of the entire Ahom community and humanity in general, At present the Medam Mephi ritual is performed annually in a common platform in most places in Assam. Followed for nearly 800 years in the state and appealing to all sections of the Ahom society irrespective of one's ability to converse in Thai language or not the Soklong is the most widely practiced tradition among the Ahoms. Soklong is their traditional marriage system. The day before the groom arrives to tie the nuptial knot, Deoban ritual is performed. Deo means god and ban means the sun. In the Deoban, blessings are sought from the supreme god Langdong. along with other gods and goddesses like Langkuri, Jansai Hung and Jasingfa. Twelve eggs, rice beer, rice, an indigenous variety of flour and twelve betel nut and leaves are offered to the gods. A separate offering is made for the dead ancestors of the house. The ritual takes place in the house of the bride. On the last day of the Soklong ceremony a sanctum sanctorium is designed it is called morol and is a universal symbol the shape can be circular or is designed like a lotus from the center the morol has 8 circles and these eight circles are again divided into 16 divisions the morol is decorated with seven colors of the rainbow these colors are derived from turmeric flour rice and other natural ingredients Artificial colors are avoided. Ninety-six earthen oil lamps are placed at the small quadrangle-shaped sizes. One earthen oil lamp 
is placed at the center and four earthen oil lamps at the spots near the central lamp. In all, there are 101 earthen oil lamps. Four banana trees are rooted in four directions and mango stem and leaves are tied to all the four. Soklong is performed with Lengdong as the supreme god. The groom and his troop arrives. The groom is greeted at the entrance by the mother of the bride. A girl, younger and a relative of the bride, washes the feet of the groom. The bride's mother welcomes her would-be son-in-law and kisses him three times on the cheek. The groom is brought to the ceremonial altar and he takes his seat facing the moral and to the east. The groom's party on seeking the hand of the bride with a gesture of beetle, nut and leaves, the bride is brought to the ceremonial altar. The bridegroom takes a bow facing the three deodhais. A relative, possibly the brother of the bride's mother, sits in between the bridegroom he will hand over the bride to the groom. He takes the left thumb of the groom and the right thumb of the bride and uniting the two, he hands over the bride to the groom chanting God's name. He expects the groom to take good care of the bride. The groom assures him that he will take good care of her. Then the bride, on the advice of the Deodhai, garlands the groom and the groom also does the same. There are 101 flowers in the garland and this number symbolically reflects 101 different feelings of both the bride and the groom. A sword called the hangdang in Thai and a cloth, which is a piece of armor protecting the wearer, is placed on a brass utensil near the moral. The most significant part of the ceremony is the offering of the sword hangdang to the groom by the bride. The hangdang is a symbol of power and glory of the Ahom dynasty. The bride offers the hangdang to the groom to protect the country, community, family and the prosperity. The groom accepts the hangdang and 
pledges to protect everyone. Once this is over, the bride offers the armor and the groom, like a true Ahom warrior, declares that he will decimate all his enemies. The Deodhai narrates the history of the Ahoms to the bride and the groom. He then offers them several useful and meaningful advice on how to live a happy married life. The Soklong ceremony comes to an end. The Soklong is a ceremony involving a host of rituals. Two of the most anticipated rituals are the game of dice and concealment of the wedding rings in a bowl of rice. Families, relatives and everyone attending the ceremony take full enjoyment in the ritual. The culture and heritage of the Ahoms have enriched this land for many, many years and has maintained its unique nature despite the changes sweeping everybody and everything in its wake. Probably no group of people or community that has ever migrated has been able to hold so much unto the roots like the Ahoms. Their customs and rituals Festivals and ceremonies are a joy, knowledge and a wonder to the eyes. The Mohans, the Delhais, and Bailungs have preserved the ancient tenets of Ahum faith and belief and continue to be the flag bearer of a tradition and culture which is a rarity in the context of modern civilization. 800 years hence, the last of the Ahums are still the devoted citizens of His Majesty, the glorious Ahum history and tradition. <laughs>